Hey, it's Doris with All the Books, and I am here with my Booktubeathon wrap-up. I finished three books during Booktubeathon, one of which I had started the week prior and was very thankful to get through it, finally. <laughs> and that would be The Master and Margarita by Mikhail Bulgakov. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, um... I just had super duper high hopes for this one. Um, it's a modern classic. There is a great deal of symbolism and allegory in it. And you know, I really thrive on that. But yeah, <laughs> this book, when I first started reading it, I was like, it is so wacky. That is just the word for it. It is wacky. It very, very much reminds me of Alice in Wonderland. Definitely. That writing style and that weird edgy out there, um, crazy going on with characters. I mean, um, there's an anthropomorphic talking cat in this book. So yeah. <laughs> um, the devil perhaps in many forms, or his minions. Um, there's a lot of, you know, nakedness and running around in one's underwear, which I didn't quite get that fetish. Um, but yeah, it's very um, all over the place with the characters, especially in the first half. The second half um, takes on a little more of a narrative bent and falls into place. But at that point, I was just, you know. So, I kind of want to blame my headspace on my not gelling with this book. Because, you know, it was the week of the infamous new car buy. And the week of returning back to school slash work. Which, you know, was really chaotic mentally for me. Um, but I kind of just think it's the book, to be quite honest. I tried to jump in with the symbolism and all of that jazz, but you know, and I got, there's like, there's a thread of biblical reference with Pontius Pilate and Jesus, and I totally got um, those segments. It's not much, it's just a few spots, but yeah, I just wasn't putting it together. I think this is a book that I would completely enjoy taught as a class. I would really get into that. but. I'm just not in a, a mental space that I was into putting that much work to understand a story. So, blame it on me. I know a lot of people really enjoy it, but I just, it wasn't there for me at the moment. But I think that I will, you know, maybe one day try again. Um, and, and the reason, like, with the Alice in Wonderland, I like Alice in Wonderland pretty well. Um, but that's a story that... Um, we on um, you know this part of the world go through childhood with and we understand a lot of the history behind that whimsical story you know with our historical heritage whereas this one coming from um, a Russian perspective and mindset I wasn't as knowledgeable about and didn't you know automatically click with mentally so yeah but you know it was fascinating. <laughs> it was. Uh, and then I finished White Chrysanthemum by Mary Lynn Brocht. And if you watched my reading vlogs with this, you know, initially, um, I just said the writing was very simplistic, which was fine. Um, but it wasn't blowing me away. But then the story kind of grabbed me. And as I progressed and got more and more involved with the story, I kind of came to realize that it wasn't necessarily the writing style that wasn't gelling with me. It was the um, narr audio narrator. Uh, I just didn't click with her um, narration of the story. I didn't like, like, I think if she had just read it, it would have been fine, but I didn't like, um, her voices as much so they kind of um, didn't quite click for me but it was fine you know it wasn't bad or anything it just it wasn't quite perfect appearing for me um, but this is set 
um, like right around that time frame that I like to read a lot about of it, uh, prior to, during, and after uh, World War II, um, and the Japanese invasion of Korea. So this one centers around an island where um, the men are fishermen, but the women are divers for sea life um, to sell and eat. So, you know, a fascinating little snippet of a culture there. And the story centers around two sisters. So the older sister is now a diver with her mother at the onset of the story. And the baby sister is about nine. So there's a 10 year, a nine year difference. So she's, I think the older sister, she was 16. So the baby sister would have just been seven when the story started. That's right. Um, so the little sister stays on the beach and the big sister dives with mom. Um, and mom is in the process of diving down below when a Japanese soldier comes down the beach. And the big sister realizes that her little sister is in danger um, of being, you know, kidnapped. So she goes on shore and basically um, gives herself so that the little sister can stay hidden and stay safe. So the sisters are then separated. The older sister is kidnapped and forced into um, a Japanese uh, comfort women where basically, um, girls and young women are stolen and put into prostitution for the Japanese soldiers. And it's just a horrific tale. It really is. Um, just, but just a great read. It, it was very impactful to my heart. Um, and yeah, I highly recommend it. Um, this reminded me of that other book I read recently but the story worked better. What was that book? Ah, Miss Burma, yeah, Miss Burma. A similar, you know, time frame. But yeah, yeah. And this one is kind of obviously going to be told from a dual perspective, so you get the real-time story of um, the older sister as she's abducted and what she goes through through the course of just one year and then you get the story of the baby sister but it's told from the perspective of when she is an, an older woman um, a grandmother herself and you know looking back on life and you know obviously in the present with her grandchildren so yeah really interesting and heart touching story and then the last one was my complete and total favorite of the week. And this will definitely appear in my top 10 for the year. The Forest Unseen, A Year's Watch in Nature by David George Haskell. Now, this book, I just happened to see it randomly on um, Book Outlet and threw it into my cart because you know I love nature writing and especially science writing and I noticed that this one was set in Tennessee where I live so definitely I needed to get it. I had no idea that this was going to be this amazing. I didn't even really realize it was a Pulitzer Prize finalist but you know that probably wouldn't have even said anything to me but this is so much more than science writing. It's very, very literally, liter, literary. Um, this man, I think this is the author himself on the cover. He is so thoughtful and insightful. So essentially, he finds this um, one meter circle um, in the woods, in the mountains of Tennessee, and he just walks up there and observes it every week or so throughout the course of a year. He calls it his mandala. And at the um, beginning of the book, he compares it to the um, sand mandalas made by the monks. 
and um, how temporal those are, but how they're, you know, um, works of reverence and, you know, sacrifice. Um, but yeah, this guy, he just, he just goes up in the mountains and sits there and watches and sees what he sees and then has these amazing reflections on it. It's just, the, it's just fabulous. It's fabulous. It's very scientific and very literally, literary. Why can't I say that word today? <laughs> very literary and just very thought provoking. Um, I loved his perspective as, as a person and a scientist and a human in this world. He very much sees nature as beautiful and necessary and worth preserving, but doesn't, you know, beat humanity up for our neglect. He, you know, it's more, we can do better, but he kind of weighs humanity and nature in the balance. I don't know. He's just, He's just so, 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 so good. And the other thing that I noticed with this that I want to mention is um, it's, you know, basically kind of essay collections and just spoofs on nature as he's sitting there. Not spoofs, that's the wrong word. I think, I, I buddy read it with Heidi and she kept calling it riffs and that's a much better word. Just, you know, his series of thoughts. Um, but yeah, it, it reminded me of you know, Thoreau and Emerson, that transcendentalist thought. Um, but the science is pretty heavy duty in it at times. So it's not one that, you know, stays on that high school level. It takes it up a notch, which I really appreciated. Um, you don't always get that, but just bear that in mind. If um, you don't read a lot of science, uh, this is fairly heavy with science, but also extremely, here it comes, literary. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, thanks for watching and I will be back soon. Bye.